Easter. Happy Easter! some of you have been out doing our Easter trail. Let's go and see what some of you have been getting up to.
all been having lots of fun. I can't wait for us to all be back together again. So I hope you haven't eaten too much chocolate yet because we've got a very busy morning. First, we're going to have a look at the Easter story, but we're gonna have a look at um, when Jesus forgave his friend Peter. The Friend Who Forgives. A true story about how Peter failed and Jesus forgave. A long time ago, there was a man named Peter who was best friends with Jesus. Peter was a fisherman. He was strong and brave, but he often said the wrong thing. Do you ever talk before you think? That's what Peter did again and again and again. Peter loved fish. In fact, one day he and Jesus had fish for breakfast. Fish for breakfast? That's weird. But we will save that part of the story until the end. On the day when Jesus first called Peter to follow him, can you guess what Peter was doing? That's right. Peter was fishing. Follow me and I will make you a fisher of men, Jesus told him. Can you imagine that? Peter, fishing for men? Jesus explained that just as Peter liked to search for fish, Jesus had come to search for people who needed forgiveness. Peter loved being friends with Jesus. He saw Jesus do lots of amazing things. One time, Peter's mother-in-law was sick. Jesus healed her. Another time, Peter was about to drown in a storm. Jesus saved him. Slowly, Peter realised that Jesus was more than a friend. He was God. He would never let Peter down. But sometimes Peter let Jesus down. Like the time Jesus explained to his friends that he had to die on the cross, but that he would come back to life to offer forgiveness. All of you will run away. You're going to say that you're not my friends, Jesus said. Peter spoke up right away. He did that a lot. I will never do that, Peter said. But Jesus told him, before the rooster crows in the morning, you will say three times that you're not my friend. I would never do that. Jesus is my best friend, Peter thought. When soldiers came to take Jesus to the cross, Peter pulled out his sword to stop them. Put your sword away, Peter, Jesus said. My father says this must happen. Jesus let the soldiers take him to a courtyard to stand trial. Peter followed from far away. Aren't you one of Jesus' friends? A young girl asked as she opened a gate for Peter to enter the courtyard. What do you think Peter said? No, I don't know Jesus. It was a cold night. So Peter walked over to a fire where some people were warming themselves. Aren't you one of Jesus' friends? Someone asked Peter. What do you think Peter said? No, I don't know Jesus. Then someone else stepped forward and looked closely at Peter. Yes. You are one of Jesus' friends, aren't you? He said. What do you think Peter said? No, I don't know Jesus. Right then, at that very moment, a rooster crowed. Jesus turned around and looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered 
that Jesus had said, Before the rooster crows, you will say three times that you are not my friend. Peter was so sad. He knew he had failed Jesus again and again and again. He didn't just need to find other people who needed forgiving. He needed forgiving too. Peter felt terrible. He ran out of the courtyard and he cried and cried and cried. Peter had let his best friend down and now it was too late because the soldiers had taken Jesus away to be killed. But Peter didn't stay sad because Jesus didn't stay dead. Three days later was the first Easter Sunday when Jesus came back to life to offer people forgiveness. But he would forgive but would he forgive Peter for failing so badly? One day Jesus went looking for Peter. Where do you think Jesus found him? That's right. Peter and his friends were fishing. Jesus called to them from the beach. Jesus jumped. Peter jumped out of the boat into the water and rushed to the beach to see Jesus. And this is where Jesus and Peter had fish for breakfast. Fish for breakfast? That's weird. Peter was so happy to see Jesus alive. But would Jesus forgive him? Peter wasn't sure. Maybe Jesus wouldn't want to talk to him. Maybe Jesus wouldn't want to be friends with him. But yes, Jesus did want to talk to Peter. And yes, Jesus did want to forgive Peter. Wow! And since Peter had said he didn't know Jesus three times, Jesus gave Peter the chance to say three times, I love you, Jesus. That's how Peter became a forgiven fisher of men. Peter spent the rest of his life telling people about his best friend, Jesus. He told them that if they put their trust in Jesus, he would forgive them again and again and again. That's because Jesus was Peter's best friend. He forgave him again and again and again. And if you trust in Jesus, he will forgive you too, again and again and again. Now we are on to the last part of our craft that we've done all this week and it's been so much fun having Zoom calls with you and doing it. So I thought I'd just go through each day to remind us of the story. So do you remember last Sunday, we made our palm leaves, didn't we? To remind us of when Jesus rode into Jerusalem and everyone laid palm leaves on the floor and he rode over them on his donkey. The next day, we made our love heart from the pink paper to remind us of Jesus washing his friend's feet. And to, that reminds us that Jesus loves us and he wants to serve us. The next day, we made the coin from the tin foil, didn't we? And that was to remind us of Judas getting 30 pieces of silver for betraying Jesus. Now the next day, we made the Last Supper, didn't we? We turned the box into a little table for Jesus to have his Last Supper and he had his bread and his wine with his friends. Then, we made the garden because Jesus went and prayed in the garden to his heavenly father. So we stuck on the beautiful flower, didn't we? And we drew the garden. And then we made the cross because Jesus was taken and he was put on a cross and he died. Do you remember we put him inside the box, didn't we? We wrapped him up like they had done, wrapped him up in the cloth and we put him inside the box. But now, it's Easter Sunday. He wasn't there, was he? Mary went and he had gone. So you need to take Jesus out of his box because he is risen, he's alive. 
and you can leave the cloth in there because that's all they found left in the tomb was the cloth and Jesus is alive. How does the Easter bunny keep fit? I don't know. How does the Easter bunny stay fit? By doing exercise. <laughs> now I've got a little extra craft for you. I thought we would bake some cross biscuits. Not cross like that, but some crosses to remind us of Jesus dying for us. So the first thing you need is you need some brown sugar. You need 100 grams of brown sugar. And then you need 200 grams of butter. And then you need one egg. And you need to whisk all that together first. So I'll do that now. Now next, once you've whisked all that together, you need to add flour and you need 250 grams of plain flour. I'm just going to add that in now. And then you need two teaspoons of baking powder. There's one, two, and you need one teaspoon of cinnamon. I love cinnamon. There we go. And then you need to mix all that together. So I'll do that now. So once that is all mixed together, you then need to add 100 grams of sultanas. Let me pull those in. And then mix it together to form a dough. And we're then we'll make those into balls to make our biscuits. Now the next bit is the fun bit because we get to get our hands in there. So you need to get some of the dough and roll it into a golf ball size piece and then place it on your tray and squish it down a bit. And keep doing that but remember to leave a space in between your biscuits because they'll spread a little bit. Okay. Now once you've done that, you need an adult to place them into the oven at 180 degrees for about 10 minutes until they're golden brown. My cookies are out of the oven and looking lovely. We're just letting them cool down. So while that happens, I've got some white chocolate which I'm going to melt and that's what we're going to use to make the cross on the top for the decoration. So I have melted all this yummy white chocolate eat it with a spoon and now you need to just using a spoon I'm going to drizzle it over the top to make a cross a bit like a hot cross bun We would love to see if you have a go at home. Send us your photos. Now, before we go, we've just got a couple of things left in our Easter packs and they're just for you to have lots of fun with because we really hope you have a lovely day at home celebrating Easter. So in your pack, you have got, hopefully it's still there, a really yummy egg to eat and enjoy. And then you've got an egg. Now, if you get um, a blunt pencil or um, a skewer, or I've got just a little cocktail stick, you can scratch into here a beautiful design. So you can do whatever you like. It's really clever. I'm going to do some zigzags and then maybe some little dots. But use your imagination and make it as beautiful as you can and then you can hang that up in your house as a decoration today. There's a piece of ribbon 
in your pack as well. So I just want to end now with a prayer. So you can close your eyes if you like. Dear Lord, we thank you for new life. We thank you for the springtime. And we thank you for chicks and lambs and all the beautiful flowers that are coming now. But most of all, Lord, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you uh, that he came and that he died for us on the cross and that he is risen, Lord. Amen. crucified Jesus the stone is rolled away they hear the angels say he is risen hallelujah he is risen hallelujah Peter hurry Peter run to the grave of the crucified Jesus strips of linen and Jesus when he broke bread they knew all Jesus said was true because he is risen hallelujah he is risen hallelujah let's go Jesus, He crucified our sin, and we will rise like.